Hi everybody and welcome back to A Case of the Jails. So if you checked out my last video, you can see that we are now on to another related topic to hormone health and amenorrhea and all these wonderful things. We're now talking a little bit more about overtraining. This is super important for a lot of people, not just women, but it has become more and more important in the sport of ultra running because it seems that there are just more people banging into more walls. I've done a ton of research and I really want to share a lot of it with you because I think that when you really understand what's happening on a physiological level with the body, you can start to make better decisions about your training. Okay, so today I want to talk about something called IGF-1. So this is insulin like growth factor one. This stuff is a marker of growth hormone. Growth hormone, despite what you may have heard in the media recently, because yes, you can dope with it, it is something that the body makes naturally. IGF-1 comes from the pituitary glands. It is an indicator of how much growth hormone is circulating in your body. I'm gonna read you a short list of some of the other things that it does. And pardon me for just looking at my note cards here. So it reduces muscle wasting, improves blood sugar balance. It helps with things like bone density, heart disease, infections, electrolyte balance, and also the immune system. We definitely want to have floating around in our body. We need help with repairing all of those body symptoms. Systems. Why can I not say systems? So what we really want here is we want a healthy endocrine system so that the pituitary gland can, in this case, pump out growth hormone and all of these body tissues and body systems can be replenished as they need to be. Because remember, with overtraining, the major problem that we have is that the stress of our training is not met with an adequate recovery time and an adequate opportunity for the body to re rest, restore, regenerate, repair itself. So what we really wanna do is we wanna give our endocrine system the opportunity to produce the hormones necessary for the growth and repair of the muscles and other body tissues. So I'm gonna be honest with you, there's a ton of studies out there that are very much based on males. A lot of this has to do with the fact that overtraining or what we now consider overtraining was actually something that started to be studied back in the day with the military and of course, Back in the day, the military was men. So th there's a lot of studies out there having to do with overtraining or overtraining syndrome in men. So I actually found a really good one that has to do with women. So I'm gonna share this one with you today. There's a few points in this study that I really wanna to read to you. So again, I apologize for reading off of the pages that I printed out like a geek, but I think it's important. So this study is called Endocrine Response to an Ultramarathon in Pre- and Post-Menopausal Women. What I think this study illustrates is that you're going to find a very significant difference in the rates of circulating IGF-1 in the bodies of female athletes before versus after an ultramarathon and then on into recovery. So let's take a look at this. I love the first line of this study, it goes like this. Ultra endurance competitions are becoming increasingly popular, but there is limited research on female participants. Yeah, I know. So what they did here was they drew blood samples 24 hours before the race and then again after the race and then during their recovery period. The reason why they decided to study IGF-1 was because, in their words, Insulin, like growth factor ones, can provide an indication of physiological strain, negative energy balance, and fatigue. And it is believed that a negative energy balance, either from prolonged exercise, caloric restriction, or both, results in lower bioavailable IGF-1. So this is gonna become really important. Remember what it says here. It's prolonged exercise, it's also nutrition. Okay, so the main findings of the study are the following. Post-race, women had a 21% decrease in IGF-1. That decrease remained 11% through their recovery. So what's happening here? In their words, prolonged exercise and a negative energy balance appear to result in lower levels of bioavailable IGF-1. The results demonstrate that among recreational female runners, an ultramarathon is associated with IGF system changes that are consistent with an energy deficient catabolic state. You know what that means, don't you? It means that after an ultramarathon, our energy systems are out of balance. It means that we have expended a lot more energy than we have replenished probably with nutrition and rest. It's not just the days after the ultra, 
yes, 21% decrease in IGF-1, but also it is in the weeks after the ultra with an 11% decrease in IGF-1. As has been said many times before, your muscles will recover within 24 to 48 hours, but your endocrine system could take weeks to come back. So what's happening all this time that IGF-1 is depressed? Well, your body's just not able to repair itself the way it should. And what happens when your body cannot repair itself, when you're a female especially, guess what's going to come out and play? Cortisol, that's right, the stress hormone that we've talked about before. Cortisol is going to be running through your system like mad because it is trying to quell the stress that's going on in your body. There's another study that I'm gonna to link to below, and yes, I am gonna to link to all these studies below, that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine, the geeky note card, neuroendocrine abnormalities in female athletes. This study shows that the more endurance exercise you engage in, the less IGF-1 you're going to have in your body. Poor nutrition also decreases IGF-1. And by the way, amenorrheic athletes displayed less IGF-1 than all. They also had a depressed metabolism. I know that's shocking. So what does this all mean? It means that no matter what you do, engaging in ultramarathon or any other type of endurance exercise, is probably gonna send your body into a little bit of a panic mode. You are going to have to be aware of this engaging in this sport. This is hard for me even to hear. I don't, I don't wanna hear this. I don't wanna think that the sport that I love so much is actually going to be potentially, I'm gonna say potentially because I'm not sure, I'm not a doctor or a scientist, I'm just reading the studies. But this is a little bit hard for me today to realize that the sport that I love so much might actually not be super good for me. So of course I'm going over here researching how do I make sure that my body doesn't go into freak out mode. I'm not a doper. I'm not about to take some steroids so that I increase my growth hormone. So what I did was I researched natural ways to increase growth hormone. Okay, don't do that. Don't do that at all. It gets real porny real quick. But what I did find is that there's maybe four things or four pieces of advice that I can offer to myself and to you to figure out how we can mitigate the effects of all of this. Number one, do not remain in a calorie deficit. Just don't do it. When you eat less than your body needs, you are putting yourself into a situation where you are going to have a depression of growth hormone and you already know that you're gonna increase your cortisol and blow your stress hormones out of the water. And if you've watched my hormone health videos, you also know that that is going to steal from the production of female sex hormones and if you are already not experiencing amenorrhea, you're probably going to. So eat, 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 eat. Make sure that you cover your caloric expenditure. Number two, and this one goes especially for women because it turns out that women tend to produce the most growth hormone at night. Make sure you're getting enough sleep. Okay, number three. This one is really, it's hard. I think that we as ultra marathoners need to consider periodized training. We're used to this term periodized training. We do understand the idea of stepping back to step forward. I have to tell you though, after researching all of this, I, I don't think that that's going to be enough. Again, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a doctor, but it seems to me that the best way to ensure success in ultra marathon training is to not train for probably a full month of every year. I'm wondering if this is something that I'm gonna do. I, I think I probably will. In fact, I'm considering taking a break after the race I have this weekend and maybe not training until the middle of January again. I believe that we all have the potential to be unstoppable. You've heard me say it before. And I, of course, want to try to push the levels of human endurance, absolutely. I believe in our sport, I believe in human capability. I think that humans were meant to run. However, seeing the hit that the endocrine system takes and what it does to our bodies, it's really making me think. And I hope that it's making you think too. So I don't have any answers. I just wanna show you some facts, some science, show you how our sport definitely has with it, implicit in it, some real issues that we have to think about. But I'm sort of asking the question, knowing this stuff, how does it make you think about our sport? How does it make you think about your training? What do you think you'll do differently after hearing this? I know that I have to do some thinking myself. I wish I could have been the bearer of better news today, but. I don't think this means we have to stop. I just think it means that we need to think a little harder about the way we're doing things. So I'm gonna keep investigating. I'm gonna keep sharing all this stuff with you. And I really hope that you're enjoying this stuff. Please, please.
please, please go ahead and leave questions or comments below. I'm going to link to every one of these studies. Um, I wish that I could share all my geeky little note cards with you guys so that you can read them. I think that we can figure this out. I think that there's gonna be a way to make this work. I'm willing to try. I just wanna say thank you to some of the people that have reached out to me, asked me questions, told me they're really enjoying the content on this channel and appreciating the effort that I'm putting into the research. I'm kind of a nerd, so I would probably do this anyway, but I'm really happy to now be able to share it with you. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you again soon.